Shalom Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We will be coming out with a teaching segment for our Saturday broadcast, as we have promised we would do on Saturdays for you guys that like that. And that will come out a little bit later this afternoon. But I was just thumbing through the news today, and when I did, I come across this uh, particular headline on Fox News. Trump supporters, protesters clash outside rally in Salt Lake City. Well, it did kind of make me wonder as I looked at the, uh, the situation going on in this particular protest here, and it has really, these protests have become very violent, uh, and it's causing a lot of problems. As supporters of the Republican, Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump and protesters clashed after a rally in Utah on Friday. Crowds who chanted Donald Trump were met with uh, Mr. Hate out of our state as police and riot gear blocked the entrance of the Infinity Event Center in Salt Lake City. You know, I could not help but wonder as I looked at this, and I even made the comment to my wife, who's actually preparing for tonight's message as well for you guys, and I said to her, you know, this is the very type scenario that could cause President Barack Obama to stay in power, declare martial law. And of course, there again, I'm wondering if whether or not violence is being incited by certain members within the government there that or certain factions, uh, you might say, in the background that could be inciting the violence in order to declare martial law. As uh, President Barack Obama did state, uh, Mr. Donald Trump will never be president. That's some pretty strong words there. I mean, how does he know this in advance? Unless there's a possibility that martial law may be declared. There's a couple of reasons why that could be a very real possibility. And I decided to do a little looking just to see if anyone else shared the same sentiment. Well, the ironic thing of all, Ben Carson, who it was running for president of the United States, or, or intended to, I believe, uh, actually believes the same thing. And this is, uh, this is on the, uh, let's see, what website was this on? Let me pull it up for you. CDN Communities Digital News, Ben Carson, can Obama use martial law to keep White House post-2016? Let me share with you some of the thoughts that he has here. The Obama administration has very quietly and subtly done many unexplicable things that could very well a uh, precursor to the suspension of some, if not all, American constitu constitu constitutionality uh, protected civil rights. By the way, when you sit there and you look at the picture there of President Obama and Vice President uh, Biden, how many of you really know that the Vice President is your real President of the United States? It's not Barack Obama. He's only the figurehead. He's the guy there to look good. He's the guy there to take all the garbage it comes that way but joe biden a very staunch faithful roman catholic is your real president of the united states another interesting thing too is how that recently there's been like a whole new surge of support for israel even prime minister netanyahu vowing to be sure there's going to be two states joe biden making comments about the support for Israel like no other time in all of their, uh, all the history of being in the White House there. Same thing with Barack Obama. Some people have wondered if they patched the ties or what's going on. I think they finally come to a consensus with the Vatican of what's really going to happen in Israel. We'll just have to wait to see how that plays out. Anyway, let's look a little bit about what Ben Carson actually had to say. Ben Carson, a black neurosurgeon of 2016 Republican presidential candidate, has repeatedly stated that he believes there is a chance that the 2016 elections may not be held at all. You know, if anybody would have been for president, I think Ben Carson would have been the best candidate out there. And uh, anyway, so let's look at a little bit here. Uh, when Combs pushed Carson, he was the one doing the interview, further on the possibility of a canceled or postponed elections, Carson responded, I don't want to find out. I really don't want to find out. I don't want to continue down this pathway that we are going down, this pathway. 
where everything is framed in a political sense or representatives are not working for the people, they're working for their party. Martial law is a system complete control by countries' military over all activities, including civilian and a theatrical or uh, actual war zone or during a period of emergency caused by a disaster such as an earthquake or flood with the military commander having dictatorial powers in many foreign countries martial law has become a method to establish and maintain dictatorships either by military leaders or politicians backed by the military now you got to keep in mind guys um, Ben Carson is a presidential candidate he no doubt has a little bit of inside privy things that are going on. I think he knows there's something coming down the pipe. And there's a lot of people out there right now in America that are being incited to rise up and take back their constitutional rights. It's a major movement in the United States. And there may be some on the inside that are being incited to do just that. And of course, it'll turn into a major problem, even a possible civil war, a bloodbath as a result. As Alex Jones has recently said, this is what the government wants. And he's trying to calm the people down. He said, this is not the way to do it. Just kind of a paraphrasing of his statements there. But I agree with him in that regards there. It's not the way to do it. You know, you have to use the political system. Unfortunately, we know things are going to change. And I do believe that there will not be a 2016, 2016 uh, election, uh, or as far as how that goes there. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to come down to it, friends. Now, I'm not prophesying anything like that, but I am very concerned that the Obama administration is going to take advantage of this. And not so much for President Obama, uh, just to be a, a, a world leader. I don't, I don't think that at all. Kind of like Michelle Bachman said, she said, I never stated that he was the Antichrist or inf in, inferred that. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are saying she did, but that was her own statement, that she did not. And I'm the uh, like-minded. I don't believe that he is the Antichrist, <clears throat> and I don't believe that this is an issue for him to gain world power. But there's something bigger inside of this that a lot of people are not paying attention to, and that has to do with the Catholic Church. This here is on Salt and Light Media, a Catholic website, I might add. It states here on September 24th of 2015, the title of their article, New York City, Capital of the World. Now, we brought this out in an article recently that the New York City is considered the capital of the world. Let's look at a couple of paragraphs here, and it might give you a better idea as why they consider it the capital of the world. Of course, we know in September of 2015 is when the Pope of Rome, Pope Francis, was visiting New York City to speak at the United Nations, showing that he was taking authority of the world's political system. And by the way, another reason why they consider it the capital of the world, 170 nation uh, leaders were there in New York City at the United Nations for this particular event. And here's the man that rules all both political and spiritual powers. You know, this is what really gets me. Why are people still looking at Pope Francis only as a false prophet? He's not running around prophesying anything. The problem is that you're not looking at is you, you, people, so many people say, well, the Antichrist is going to do a one world religion and run the world's government. Hello? Is there anybody not waking up yet as to what the Pope of Rome has done? He has successfully put together basically a one world religion. He is uniting all the religions of the world. All the churches have come back to the mother Rome again and have joined right back up into that system of idolatry. And, the, and on top of that, he is calling for a one-world government. He's calling for a one-world uh, financial institution. You know, it's the popes of Rome. After World War I, I think it was back in 1919, they were the ones that put together the United Nations or the League of Nations at that time. Friends, you need to wake up and recognize who's the ones doing this. Pope Francis has left the American capital for New York City, the second stop of the apostolic journey in this country. With less than 40 hours in the metropolis, the supreme pastor will have packed, a packed schedule, praying 
with clergy and religious visiting and diplomats praying at Ground Zero, meeting children and families and migrants and celebrating Mass in Madison Square Garden. After New York City, the Pope will set out for Philadelphia, the last city in the trip. Pope John Paul II once told Cardinal John O'Connor, then Archbishop of New York, I am only uh, the Bishop of Rome, but you are the Archbishop of the capital of the world. This raised eyebrows among many, but it does have some truths to it. New York City is home to the United Nations headquarters and is arguably the world's most important financial and cultural center. New York City is also one of the strongholds of Catholicism. Did you hear that? The stronghold of Catholicism served by the Archdiocese of the New York and Diocese of Brooklyn. The two dioceses are separated by the East River and serve 10.73 million Catholics through 556 parishes. And you wonder who's got the capital of the world. Well, here's the reason why I bring this out, guys. If the Pope of Rome has been working to put together this new world order, that they're wanting to establish. And let's even take and throw in Planet X in here for just a moment. I personally believe Planet X is not coming this year whatsoever, even in light of some of the news that's been going out on one of the Israeli uh, news channels there saying that it'll be here in September of 20, September 28 of this year. I totally disagree with that. Uh, I could be wrong, so I, I do want to give a little bit of leeway there. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think I am. Uh, speaking with Brother Chris on this as well, I wanted to get his own thought. Uh, he had pretty much the same thought as I did. We're looking at three to four years out <clears throat> on Planet X coming in. I think that Planet X comes as a judgment uh, to the world for the rejection of the Messiah, the true Messiah, Yeshua, at the, at the end of the, um, the witnessing of the two witnesses there. Uh, and speaking of that as well, I know Brother Bagley did a video here recently or yesterday about two witnesses show up in Israel. Many people got excited thinking it was actually the two witnesses of Revelation 11. But if you listen to all of uh, Brother Paul's uh, video there, he does separate the differences with the two witnesses that are coming in uh, there at that particular meeting and uh, the two witnesses of Revelation 11, the ones that came there to the Sanhedrin was basically to establish the Jewish calendar and it was something that had not happened where two witnesses came in at the same time. I did point out though, the article does state in there that one of those quote unquote witnesses uh, when being grilled by the Sanhedrin about questions they did not anticipate to get asked, uh, abruptly says, can I look at my cell phone pictures to see before I answer the question? Friends, listen, the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, are not going to be looking at their cell phones, and the Sanhedrin is not going to be grilling them. When they come, there is going to be repentance. There is going to be, either the Sanhedrin is going to hate them, as they did 2,000 years ago, or uh, they, along with many different Jewish people in Israel, their eyes will come open and they will weep bitterly as a family that lost their only son. That's the first thing that's going to happen when the two witnesses come. And I do believe that Brother Bagley uh, pointed that out as well in the video. He just doesn't do it at first. And I think some people maybe just got excited, turned the video off and went out and tell everybody, oh, the two witnesses have come to Israel. No. And he did not, he did not say that either. So, uh, but the point that I want to make here is that we're leave, living in a very deceptive time right now. The Vatican is working with the Jewish people as well. I believe that they are going to come out before too long. I did get a little report that there may be a secret mass. I've not been able to corroborate this as of yet. That will be held by Pope Francis and uh, some of the rabbinical community in Israel. I'm wondering if they're not going to try to say DNA that Pope Francis is, is a true Levite. I do not believe that, and I know it'll all be a hoax if that's what does come out of this, but I think they're going to try to crown him as the high priest of Israel. It's one reason why you saw him sitting inside uh, the, the, uh, the upper room over King David's tomb, 
uh, we see that Israel, without a referendum in Israel, gave the Pope of Rome an official seat there at the tomb of David, effectively making the Pope of Rome the King of Israel. Uh, you may not realize how serious that is, but that is so, and it is a fact that King David was buried there. Go in there. If you've never been there and you go to Israel, be sure to go to King David's tomb. If, if anything happens to you like it did with me, there is an anointing there at that tomb, uh, for sure. And But uh, that being said, um, this may be the reason why martial law will have to be declared by Barack Obama, because the Vatican is not going to take a chance of Donald Trump becoming the president of the United States. They must control who the president is, because as the Pope has already stated, this is the capital of the world. This is the New World Order section of his capital. The Pope of Rome runs everything from Vatican City in Italy, but eventually he's going to move his headquarters to Jerusalem, and they're definitely going to divide the country of Israel, and unfortunately, they're going to remove the name of Israel as well. And that's another issue too. I had several people commenting on the video that I did about the name of Israel being taken off of the visa uh, website. Uh, and if you go back and look, I did share in the um, subject line on that video, I share the actual link. And as it was reported in the uh, Israeli uh, news that, that first brought this article out, it is a subcontractor for the government, the U.S. government that does visas. It's their website, not gov.us visa section, but it is an official United States government agency that is a subcontractor for visas and passports that actually has removed Israel's name. We did post that link in there. Uh, no, it's not false information as some people tried to be uh, say that on there. Others were just very kindly and said, you know, brother, this is, uh, we went there and it's not there. So I did post that in there so you can see it. It is there. And no, the name of Israel is not there. This is the whole thing that they're trying to do in Psalm 83. They want to remove Israel from being a nation. And that's what they're going to do when they divide the country. Israel will no longer be a nation. They're going to give the Golan to the Palestinians. I do believe, sister, that uh, that told me about this and, and the... And the uh, Catholic priest has shared that with her. I believe that's going to come as well. So a lot of things are happening, friends. It's a very serious time that we're living in. Uh, I'm expecting 100% that martial law is going to hit the United States. I'm ex I do believe that the, the, the U.S. government um, may be inciting some of this violence in the background. When I say in the background, you have to understand, undercover agents work for the government, infiltrate a lot of these radical organizations. And believe me, Without impunity, as an undercover agent, you can start this type of incitement, uh, and you'll never get in trouble. You'll get arrested like everybody else will, but next thing you know, that person's not in jail. They're just out all over again. Know some of these things for a fact. Uh, so anyway, uh, be watchful. Stay out of these protests, guys. I would not get caught up into any of this nonsense, nonsense whatsoever, uh, but... Anyway, we love you guys. God bless you. And uh, Baruch Hashem. And be listening a little bit later this evening, later tonight, our time anyway, late tonight, our time there, we'll be sharing with you a very interesting uh, message for you tonight about the Book of Enoch and the authenticity of the Book of Enoch. God bless you and Shalom.